This is where it all begins So say goodbye To all your fears, all your doubts This is where they die This is where we come to win We come to fly This is where we make our dreams come to life Welcome to Innovation City And so Miami is, is equally American and Latin American just inherent in part of the immigrant experience, the exile experience in particular, um, is kind of a hustle, right? You're, you're seeking out a better future. I think that's true for America as a whole, um, whether you're, you kind of settled the West, whether you were the Irish or the Polish, or even kind of the founding fathers, you were looking for something better, right? And so that hustle, that ethos, that desire for the American dream, to be more, for your kids to do more and have more opportunities, that's ever present here. We are entrepreneurs like by blood here, right? Right? It is in our system to be testing things and hustling and grinding and that, that's just who we are as a city really. Importantly, we have the anchor institutions. I think universities and colleges play a big role. That's going to help kind of create the, the new generation, right? We're an early ecosystem, but we're, we're eager to, to build it and, uh, and I think it's a matter of time. For me, it was really a dream to try to move to the U.S. and build a company, and Miami seemed like a great place to do it. There's so much entrepreneurship. In fact, it was just picked the top city for entrepreneurship by the, the Coffin Foundation, and it's always been in the top two or three, so it's a great place to do it. And if you can live where everybody else vacations, it's a pretty nice lifestyle. We have uh, probably the most amazing environment for testing and, and adopting um, medical technologies, healthcare products. And so if you think about wanting to test something um, if you're gonna break it it'll break here um, if it works here then there's a good chance you can take it anywhere in the country it's been a majority minority city for a long time already and so I think that the country is all moving in that direction right and I think that's somewhere where we can lead as an example of you know this is how we can all live together and work together in every individual problem area there's dozens of people all at the same time trying to solve that problem and they often view each other as competition you know well, why would I give to you instead of them why would I invest in your thing and why are you better than than them that's the wrong question it's the wrong orientation uh, but the right question is like what is it going to take to solve that problem and how many of you can get your heads together and do something bigger and bolder like, there's enough money here to build bigger bolder ideas than the ones we've got going already uh, if we would trust ourselves to go bigger than we've already done and to say like here's what I've got what do you got like what what could we do if we did together we are gonna be the voices that will be rebranding and reshaping the city right um, and if we're gonna be those voices who are gonna be building nonprofit for-profit companies um, then we're going to be demanding better ways, smart city practices, you know, but because nobody else will. Health and education are connected because they are the two fundamental investments in people. Education defines your future and health defines your present. So if we really believe that it's the human capital that counts the most, uh, then we have to invest in people. What drives me is really making sure that especially our children have access to the opportunities that they deserve to be able to be you know, productive, healthy citizens. We need to make sure that everyone has equitable access to the opportunities. And if we get it right, I think it's going to be a model for the rest of the nation. A lot of, of people growing up, they don't know their options because they have not been exposed two options, right? And until someone sort of kind of pops that bubble and get you outside of that bubble, you don't know, you know? You don't know what's out there. And and then you don't have the example set before you, you know, to really, to really go out there and do it. And I think that once you expose um, individuals to their options, they're a lot more open to exploring if it's possible for them. But you gotta lead them. And when you start to form real meaningful relationships with kids, you start to uncover some of the obstacles that are standing between them and success. Those obstacles and the access to music are all rooted in inequities and injustices in our society and, and larger systemic issues. And my mission is always to try to find ways to create jobs for our students. A little bit about Miami Day College, like it's the largest education institution in the country and uh, uh, we graduate more Latins and uh, African-Americans than any other institution in the country. 
we have the raw material, meaning we have a lot of wealth, but there's a gap there around how it's activated and deployed around startups and more risky things that are not, you know, real estate or some of these more proven rate of return type projects. And so that's a gap that we can fill. That's a gap that's in our expertise. I wanted to do something that made us smile. And I wanted to also train our employees uh, in the most marketable skills possible. We knew that they weren't going to be in popsicles forever. And so we settled on like just doing this literally a one day event uh, for our employees, like their friends and their family. And like, we're going to teach you how to code and we're going to bring all our cool friends that do really cool stuff. And um, we end up having over 80 people show up. I moved back to Miami to start my company here because I wanted to build here. And I really believe we have the capabilities here. I started off working in a machine shop, building my high school battle bots. And that's what got me hooked. And I was like, I want to make things and I can make things being an engineer. And it's what led me to, to college. Um, my dad paid for his engineering degree while being a mechanic. For me, I see it as a way to help the community, um, to help people that might not have access to the same educational opportunities, to, to have people have easier access to, to great incomes. We are a cultural capital in the world. There is no doubt about it. And what sets us apart from other cities that are cultural capitals is our cultural mix. You won't find this kind of cultural mix anywhere else in the world. It is really unique to Miami. And that mix of cultures and heritage and traditions and, and live arts backgrounds really is what sets this city apart from any other. In a 10-year stretch, $1 billion was invested in cultural infrastructure. No other city in the United States has put a billion dollars into cultural infrastructure for 50 years. Once you make that step, once you take that step, graduate to that level, the entire city lifts itself because imaginations are on fire everywhere. And it is has made a difference. A, a lady from the Seattle C uh, group comes to me and she says, Pilar, do you realize that you are Hispanic? You're a minority, you're brown, you're an immigrant and you're a key gas entrepreneur? And and I, I don't know if it was it was that and it was a stepping outside like my bubble of the day to day that made me realize like, you know what, it's true. We need to own who we are. We need to own the success, the fears, the um, opportunities that we bring as women. We have this light inside of us that we need to let shine and illuminate really brightly, but we, we dull it and dim it down sometimes because we don't see those role models. Whenever I talk to someone about the city, I always say this is the time where you want to be here because you can really sort of be a part of the growth of it and you can really have a hand in how Miami moves and what it becomes in the future. Welcome to Innovation City.